let's truly look at who Jorge Masvidal is. He's a 50-50 journeyman fighter. Journeyman bum, Masvidal. The guy's a bum, he's been beat up by everybody. The guy's a complete scrub. Jorge Masvidal, journeyman fighter. Journeyman. Journeyman. I've never considered myself a journeyman. Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal. My bad. Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal. Racist. Oh, don't give me your tiring woodly bullshit. If you're going to play up your Cuban and Peruvian heritage, then so am I. Yeah, you're right. Known on the streets of Miami, Florida as Game Bread, meaning he's bred to fight anytime, anywhere. Interrupt his interview. Fuck you. Fight me. Talk about his family. Fuck you. Fight me. Smudges Timberlands, fuck you, fight me. He's good with catchphrases. So I had to give him the three piece with the soda. Super necessary. What I'm gonna do is baptize him. Has one of the best sucker punches. I'm really known, like in my area of Westchester, Miami, Florida. I'm known I got one of the best sucker punches in the business. And loves wrestling. I love, 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 love wrestling. It's like, I love mm. the wrestling. I love wrestling. To me, wrestling is one of the greatest things in the world. So is boxing. So you put the two together, I couldn't say no. Fuck, do I love wrestling, you know? Unless it's used against him. He wants to hug my leg and put his face in my crotch. You're a crotch sniffer. If somebody wants to see guys hugging and sniffing crotches. We want to see. I love crotch. He can also be a race baiter. But don't worry, he hasn't reached T-Wood status. I think I would have been a champion a long time ago if I had bleached my hair, got a puka shell necklace, maybe some contacts, bleached my skin a little whiter, then oh, things no. might have been What are you trying to say? No, because you're racist. The Jake Ellenberger comment. Next. Some of the racist media that I hear sometimes that, to that point, they were saying that the, back, the fight was back and forth. It's hard to find that footage of where the, the fight was back and forth. So I, I'm like, you can say whatever you want, but you can't say the fight was competitive. Well, wait, so you think that some of the media is racist? Why would they say that? Then? You know, and it's white reporters are saying that, you know? Then plays up to those stereotypes. I think it's Jorge Masvidal, or it might be a young Al Pacino. Scarface. Scarface, yeah. Right? Yeah. Tony Montana. Say hello to my little friend. First of all, the suit. What's going on there? Oh, you know what's going on there. You live that era, man. Come <laughs> on, Kenny. A sellout. If I don't have a title shot, this sport took a drastic turn for the worse. It's all WWE and reality TV show, and that's not what I signed up for, man, and that's not what I'm going to do. You're not going to catch me doing whole shit to get there. You know, I'm just going to fight and continue to be myself. A sore loser. I've got a lot of split decision losses that I've lost have been blatant robberies. A hypocrite. I don't care about the fame and stuff like that, but the sport has gone in that direction. That's not me, man. I don't like the flirting back in line with dudes. It's not my cup of tea. If you post five pics a day with 30 hashtags, that's not me, though. My, my skill is in the gym. I'm in the gym so long I ain't got time for them corny ass posts. I'm not going to be half naked right. everywhere yeah. I go like these soul selling bitches online. That's not me. Makes false claims. I had a good run in 19. It's going to be better 2020. I guarantee you that. Before my career is done, that fight happens again, and I leave Kobe in the hospital for a good amount of time. Overestimates his striking ability. I just see us in complete different levels. You know, I, man, it, it's like disrespectful to, to bring that guy in the striking aspect. Usman will never get there. Usman's never been there. We can't stand together, and he knows it, you know? He's scared to strike, and I don't blame him. He's going to pretend maybe he wants to strike. 
But he knows what happens every time it's fresh in his memory, you know? Him getting dropped by body shots, him taking his gloves off, not wanting to spar, making a scene. At the end of the day, I'm game bread. He's Gilbert. He's going to go for the takedown 100 miles per hour and as hard as he can and hope that he gets in. And can also be bitter. How long I've been doing this? And now people are like, man, this guy's awesome, this and that. I didn't just wake up and get good. Why now they're all on me? Because I beat Cowboy? Who the fuck is Cowboy? You know what I'm saying? Even after the Cowboy fight, they didn't say how good a performance I did. They said Cowboy shouldn't have took that fight because it was too early. Cowboy should have not fought a guy like me that wasn't even ranked. Cowboy looked flat. For as long as Jorge could remember, he always wanted to be a gangster. To him, it meant being a somebody in a neighborhood full of nobodies. He began competing in backyard fights. Win or lose, you'd always catch a beating, but the way Masvidal saw it, everybody takes a beating sometimes. It was there when he first met Kimbo Slice. He couldn't have been more than 28 or 29 at the time, but he was already a legend. See, Kimbo was one of the most feared guys in the city. Fights never bothered Kimbo. It was business. Kimbo was the kind of guy who rooted for the bad guys in movies. Kimbo might have moved slow, but it was only because Kimbo didn't have to move for anybody. As Masvidal continued winning fights, his reputation on the streets grew. One day, some kids from the neighborhood carried his mother's groceries all the way home. You know why? It was out of respect. Jorge began his MMA career in 2003, fighting in promotions like Bellator and Strikeforce before joining the UFC in 2013. He trains at American Top Team, where several other big-name fighters also work out. There was Dustin the Diamond. Come on, and it's always crispy. Andre the Pitbull. Joanna fucks like a champion. I hate when they send me all these dick pics. Prelim Pedro. And Tyron two times because he lost to Jake Paul two times. Um, I thought I had a great fight. I thought I pushed hard. He's a hard guy to um, gauge distance on. Masvidal was a win-some, lose-some fighter, often being referred to as a journeyman. The definition of a journeyman is an athlete who is reliable but not outstanding. However, there are levels in regards to this. Jorge was always fighting lower-ranked opponents and did actually fight for a title in Strikeforce. I'd argue that most casual fans weren't even aware of Masvidal until he beat Donald Cowboy Cerrone. I would also argue that this was Jorge's false start with his resurrection. That's because after the fight, he tried to make a bet with Dana that he couldn't find someone at welterweight who could beat him. Dana White! Bring me somebody that could beat me. I got 200K. You can't find nobody that could beat me. Take me up on the bet, Dana. That's why I told Dana, if you want to fight, you want me to fight, take me up on this bet. $200,000, you can't find nobody in the welterweight division that could beat me. Nobody. No, you moron. I'm broke. Thank God Dana didn't take him up on that bet because Gamebred would go on to lose his next two fights. Afterwards, he took some time away from fighting to do a reality show, competing in physical challenges against other high-level athletes in the Dominican Republic. During those three months, Jorge had a lot of time to reflect on his career, vowing to come back better than ever. After the show finished filming, Jorge's friend and manager, Malky Kawa, asked him what was next. The world should go in everything in it. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack Born a rock star in this life, gonna live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm bad, doing no cap Only God wants you, better go live it up Cash in the bag, stadium pack Baby, I'm bad, yeah. baby, I'm bad I just wanna stay bad, stay mad, shit by my shoulder Cause they treat me like an outcast I ain't gonna take that, stay back I'll be swinging hard till the hits come in all caps I ain't gonna lay back, pray that someone's gonna help me Ain't nobody like that I ain't gonna wait, that's all fact Give me one shot and I'll never get the throne back Jorge would get matched up against Darren Till This couldn't have happened at a better time for Game Red with his newfound motivation he had dropped down in the rankings due to inactivity, while Till just lost his first pro fight that happened to be for the title. This matchup happened for several reasons. The UFC saw star potential in Till but had trouble finding him a legitimate opponent to face. They ended up going with Jorge knowing that he'd strike with Darren and also because he's a dog who would put up a good fight. Let's make this clear. The UFC viewed this as a rebound fight for Till. Darren was the young, brash UK fighter who they hoped would become a star while Masvidal was a seasoned veteran who seemed to be forever stuck as a low-level contender who couldn't break through. They were wrong.
After eating a few punches, Till assumed that the smaller Masvidal could not hurt him, which he later admitted in an interview. However, getting caught leaning back with your chin up tends to overcome that obstacle. Sweet Caroline! Gamebred momentarily spoiled the UFC's plans by knocking Till out in the second round, but the excitement didn't end there. Great fight in a co main, but there was a lot of talk early on of potentially you fighting Darren. It's a little bit of disappointment, honestly, that you're not in the main event. 100%. Um, I feel I should have been in the main event. I called out both guys, Masado and, and Till. You're not as good as you think you are, mate. I'm telling you. you Listen. Ain't. I'll punch a hole in your face. You do fucking nothing. You punch a hole in your face. What are you talking about? Listen, oh, come on. your fight will come. Will and come. when it comes, oh, we'll you'll we'll get it. We will. We'll, we'll right now in England, I'm the number one. You're not number one. Well, I am on the main fucking event, mate. You're the fucking event. You're the number one. <laughs> come on, Leon, don't kid yourself, oh, brother. Listen, you know. You, you know you're, you're, you're not on my level, Till. You're, what? You're, you're not on my level. Mate, you took your fucking you, five you, rounds you to finish you, an you, old you cowboy. Come. Till was right when he alluded to the fact that Leon couldn't finish Cowboy in five rounds. The UFC has a history of booking up-and-coming fighters who could potentially make a name off of an accomplished veteran. Dana White is not a fan of a fighter who plays it safe, and he's not alone because many fans feel the same way. So when Masvidal and Till annihilated Cerrone while Leon coasted with him for five rounds, it was no shock why he wasn't in the main event. Immediately after Masvidal knocked Till up to the next division, he was giving an interview backstage while Thirsty Leon interrupted him because he was still salty about not getting the spotlight. My ring's outside. Break yourself, dude! You gotta go to the Eastside, motherfucker! I got one of the best sucker punches in the business. Never piss off a gangster. So I had to give him the three-piece with the soda. From beating Till to punking Leon in the same night with a catchphrase on the side, Masvidal was starting to gain notoriety that he had never had before. This was only the beginning. I don't get full on a three-piece and a soda. He better bring the whole damn family meal for that night. If you were Leon in that situation and he came up and did that to you, what would have been your reaction? That you are not really secure with your own masculinity, that you see, Oh my God, he said something. I need to go prove I'm tough. Payow, I am tough. There is no way on God's green earth this guy could do anything to me. It's totally impossible. I will do whatever I want to this person. I will dominate them. I will humiliate them. When Curly Sue Askren squeaked by Robbie Lawler making his long-awaited UFC debut, he was quickly looking to move on to another big fight. He aimed his sights at the winner of Till vs. Masvidal, but assumed it was going to be Till like most did. Then after Jorge won and gave his three-piece and a soda to Leon, Ben thought Gamebred would avoid him at all costs. So naturally, he talked a bit of shit to challenge his ego. Let's see how that played out. Well, I got a question. All these reporters ask me why you're so mad. I'm kind of curious. I'm not mad. You are mad. Yeah, you can't stand me. Why not? No, I looked at you. I said I was busy. I go to the bathroom. Come on, answer. Answer all them. Why are you so mad? Stuff you're facing crotches. Yeah, keep looking at me like this, the same way you're gonna beat them all, baby. You need to lighten up. You know, I kind of had to entice George into taking the fight, but I was able to do that, and it's great. Why did you think initially that he, that fight wouldn't come together? I think the real reason is he knows I'm a freaking terrible matchup for him. I recall thinking, this guy's weak, there's no way he could ever beat me. Do you think he left with that same feeling? Well, why, why else would he have so much reluctance to fight one of the hottest guys in the division? If he thought, oh, that guy was a wimp, I whooped him that day, he wouldn't have had any reluctance. You know, Robbie's a power puncher. Robbie hits really hard. George is more of a volume striker. And has he had a few knockouts in his career? Sure. He's got a lot of decisions on his record. And so, you know, if you're thinking, hey, he's going to put me down with one shot, I think that's probably unlikely. Game bread is in the building. And these guys just flapping gums at each other. You can do it! Any okay. chance they get. Let's do it! Say hello to my little friend! Oh my god! Let's go! Masvidal <laughs> has just made a statement. And he has just turned in the fastest knockout in UFC history. 
He didn't know it was gonna be a buffet though. He thought it was gonna be a three piece. Now you're getting the whole fucking MGM Grand buffet to the face, man. Everything of that flying knee was 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 brilliant. He set up the flying knee perfectly. He landed it perfectly. He's unique. He's that dude's a fighter. That guy is a guy that if he wasn't doing this for a living, he'd be doing this anyways. Fine-looking pussy in this room tonight. I'll tell you that much. Jorge Masvidal had a good last fight. Good last fight. There ain't nobody who does it right, but me and him. So I know my man's a gangster, but he ain't no West Coast gangster. You know what I'm saying? When Masvidal landed the knee that broke the UFC record for fastest knockout, his star power went through the roof gaining attention from the mainstream to the point where one of the sport's biggest stars called him out. Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal had similar backgrounds, career paths, and personalities when it came to fighting. Both were also former lightweights that now fight at welterweight. It was almost astonishing that they had never fought before. The fight between them would be so popular that when Nate said it would be for the fictitious BMF title, the UFC actually created a new belt just for their fight. Masvidal even asked The Rock to present the belt to the winner and he agreed. Jorge would batter Nate for three rounds before the doctor stopped the bout due to a cut. The ending was anticlimactic, but the majority of the fans had seen enough to the point where an immediate rematch was unnecessary. Masvidal's name was bigger than ever. Fans assumed that the only two choices for his next fight would either be Conor McGregor or fighting for a title. There was a time where you were getting split decision, split decision. Mm. Now you're like, five seconds, don't blink. I like reverse engineered my whole career. Why the hell would I look for a way to outpoint a guy that should be ending them? Like make a math formula so there's no judges involved. I gotta find a way to eliminate the opposition, separate myself from the pack, baptize these people so they're in outer orbit. And when they come back, there's no questions of who the better man is. When Conor McGregor returned to face Cowboy, Masvidal sat in the front row dressed in the same Versace robe that Conor wore leading into his boxing match with Floyd Mayweather. So when the fight ended in just 40 seconds, Jorge expected a call out but was quickly waved off like a Kevin Lee comeback. When the Thou shall not be mentioned happened around the world, Dana created Fight Island. Marty Usman was scheduled to face Gilbert Burns at UFC 251, but Burns had to pull out a week prior for catching Thou shall not be mentioned. Still salty about getting stood up for the prom, Gamebred would leverage the UFC for a spike in pay to take the fight on just six days' notice. They didn't come to the numbers that I wanted. I would have been right in Miami, Florida, sitting on my couch, eating sushi, playing video games, you know? So they came correct, and that's why I'm here. And that's the only thing I can tell young fighters coming up. Know your value. The biggest hurdle Masvidal faced was having to cut 20 pounds in a few days. Usually when fighters prepare for their fights, they gradually lose weight throughout camp and then cut the remaining pounds towards the end. For those of you who have never weight cut before, imagine being locked in a room listening to Tyron Woodley rap for 24 hours. It's not quite that bad, but still pretty awful. Has he been training for you? Or is he oh, coming he, into this fight on six days? The true no, six days he, notice. Oh, he's huh? been training like that. Don't be fooled by that. Everyone's like, oh, he's like he's coming off the couch. He's no Tank Abbott. This guy's has been training. Have you seen the videos? He's bringing in this wrestler, that wrestler. Like that's gonna help. I'm the one risking everything. This is a win-win for him. After he gets beat up, then it's a built-in excuse. Gamebred succeeded at making weight, and now the fight was set. The pay-per-view sold about 1.3 million buys, which was the highest it had been in years for a card that didn't have Conor McGregor on it. Many fans believed in the resurrection and thought that Jorge would baptize Usman, but that's not at all how the fight would unfold. Marty the party would hold Masvidal against the cage, playing footsie with him for the majority of the fight. Can I get a refund? No, you moron! The resurrection appeared to be over. Or was it? After Gilbert Burns finally got his chance at Kamal Usman but came up short, Masvidal would campaign for a rematch against the champ with a full training camp. It didn't take much convincing for the UFC to schedule the rematch since their first pay-per-view sold extremely well. I come in here to perform and bring the violence that they crave. But the fans no can't secret. fight for you. I'm going to whoop your ass off by myself. I don't need nobody. You said that last time. What happened? Yeah. You know what happened? You rubbed feet with me. Really? Yep. Face didn't say that. Let's go. I didn't get the broken nose. You did. 
let's be honest. You got 14 losses in your career, seven in the UFC. You're three and three in your last six. You are sitting there today because I chose you. He's a guy, remember, that never wanted to do media. Oh, he's too good for that, he's too good for this. But this clown is showing up at fights now with a robe on. This guy's wearing a suit pretending to be Tony Montana now. He's turned into everything that he said that he wouldn't be. I just see us in complete different levels, you know. I've, man, it, it's like disrespectful to, to bring that guy in the striking aspect. Usman will never get there. Usman's never been there. We can't stand together, and he knows it. We're not in the same playing field when it comes to stand-up, and he knows it. That, that man could never look me in the eyes and say, I, I would stand with you. He's going to immediately magnetize on my crotch and, and do what he does, you know. He hits like a bitch. He's scared to strike, and I don't blame him. Watch out! Super necessary. You call yourself Cuban, you make me a Cuban, throw up. It's crazy that Usman replicated the same sequence that knocked Jorge out once before early in his career. Props to Trevor Whitman for that. Was this a sign that the resurrection was over, or did Usman just have Masvidal's number? The guy's a bum. He's been beat up by everybody. Street Judas Masvidal, you know, he's in the rankings somehow. I don't know how, you know, he, he's a 50-50 journeyman fighter. The guy's a complete scrub. He's a bum. He's a deadbeat, man. He's a nobody. He's a criminal. This is the most meaningful moment for George Masvidal's career. The journeyman that he is with double-digit losses and never accomplished anything in the sport. Oh, we're going to give you the BMF title. It's a participation trophy. It's a one-off. It's not a real title. He lost to Damian Maia, and it was a big, you know, his big fight. You know, Damian Maia was on a A-fight win streak or whatever, you know, crushing everybody, and it was a title eliminator fight. And, you know, he got beat up in that fight. And then I fight Damian Maia, like, six months later, and, and uh, you know, I go out there and just freaking leave him a pool of his own blood in his home city, you know. I remember coming back from that trip from Brazil, and he was just so salty and, like, just like a diva. Like, man, acting like he's famous, like having a big ego. As soon as I passed him up, started getting more success than him, you know, he got jealous, and he started turning his back. He started saying comments in the media for no reason, like, oh, that crotch sniffer. Like, bro, what are you talking about? When things went completely sour, um, my coach coached him from amateur all the way till he won uh, the interim belt against um, the Sanyos, in which I was in his corner. And Paulino Hernandez trained him pretty much damn near free and, and told him, just give me 5%, you know, of, of what you make. And they shook like hands, like a man. I did the same deal with Paulino, and, and at the time I was making like a thousand dollars a fight, so he was getting like fifty dollars a fight for training me for like three months, you know. But I kept it coming, I kept it coming. Now he's getting a handsome check every time I fight because I'm one of the biggest paid guys, you know. So he took that gamble on me. Kobe finally got a chance to pay him out the money that that was right, you know, five percent out of his title belt, and um, the total amount was twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Guess how much he paid to that? Not a penny, you know. So that's when our relationship went sour. Y'all don't just watch my videos for the entertainment, laughs, and accurate storytelling. You also come here for the truth, and the truth is that ever since Colby and Jorge became friends, Colby had been thirsting for Gamebred's sister, Gina. Whenever she'd come around, he'd eye fuck the hell out of her nappy-headed ass, and Jorge didn't like it. You see, Colby had a weakness for frizzy-haired bitches, and nothing filled him up faster than hoping the carpet matched the drapes. I've never been a fan of the bush, to be honest. Really? Yeah. I don't mind it. You mentioned that, you know, the big money fights are the ones that you want, for example, the McGregor fight. But I think a lot of people would agree that a fight between you and Colby Covington would probably bring in a lot of money. Is that fight at all on your radar? It's not on my radar. You got his jaw broken by the guy that I'm about to baptize. <laughs> so I, after I'm done with Usman, the world will see the, the, the vast... We're not in the same playing field with the skill level, man. We're not. We haven't been since we were in the gym as kids, and we're not definitely now. But the only way I could show that is when I get my hands on Usman. So I'll just wait till that day comes. Oh, really, dude? <laughs> you want another one of the bed? Just let me know. Where are you going? 
This is the spot you want ever get. Man, we ain't gonna take that. Just say go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close, bud. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. You really think I give a shit? You're right. I won't lose this fight. I'll never lose to this fake piece of charlatan. It's just not gonna happen, man. American Top Team kicked you out, so damn, they kicked you out too. Sucks. You dumb fuck. You went begging back. Look at that cheap ass suit you're wearing, bro. You don't make that no damn money, bro. Son, you couldn't afford this suit with all the alimony you got. The only pay to thing Marissa. cheaper than that suit you're wearing is those fucking fake ass teeth that I'm gonna knock the fuck out on Saturday. The only bro. fake thing fuck here is you, up. phony Montana. Whoa. You're dumb and ignorant and broke. You're wasting your money on- I'm Twitter broke, but you gotta pay half your paycheck to your wife. <laughs> the fight played out how most educated fans expected. Colby kept the pressure on Jorge mixing in his boxing and takedowns. Masvidal had a puncher's chance and did land one good shot, but it wasn't enough. Gamebred's ego wouldn't let him accept the loss. For him, the feud was far from over. He's still somebody, if I see him out in the streets, I'm gonna give him everything I got to break his fucking jaw, you know? I tell him, I'm gonna go to the sushi place, bro. Dinner's on me, you know? Let's go, I'll be waiting for you. So I get in my car, go to the place. It's not showing up. I get on Instagram, hey, bro, you know, if you wanna collect your dinner, I'm over here, blah, blah, blah. Never showed up. So I've always known, deep down inside, he's a coward, man, and I just can't wait for March 5th to expose him. If he came for sushi, was it gonna be a conversation or was it gonna be a fight? What do you think? I think it's probably gonna be a fight. Yeah, he's probably gonna break a bottle on his face. Post-fight, uh, Jorge said that if he sees you in the street, he's going to try and break your jaw, see you soon. For him, it seems like this isn't over. This is the same guy that said, oh, I'm going to leave Kobe in critical condition on Monday. He might not make it. So the only thing in critical condition is Jorge Masvidal's career. Following his loss to Kobe, Gamebred was in a dark place. It's bad enough that Jorge's sister is a notch on Kobe's belt, but now so is Jorge. After running into John Jones and bumming 25 kilos of coke, he snapped out of it. Jorge had a new mission. He'd stay up for weeks at a time, staring at security cams, hoping to locate Colby's whereabouts. Then, like a ghetto on-star, Jorge found his position. I take my licks like a man. If you beat me, cool, you beat me, but I'm not quitting. I'm not throwing a temper tantrum, you know? I'm coming for you. Masvidal would jump Colby outside of a restaurant. Fighter or not, blindsiding somebody is a punk-ass move. Especially when you've already fought the guy legally for 25 minutes but couldn't get it done. Masvidal was anything but a coward, but even a badass can do some squirrely shit. I still got three felonies because of this little bitch that allegedly I did this and allegedly I, I did that. This guy's a lying piece of shit, coward. I got one of the best sucker punches in the business. Never piss off a gangster. He ain't lying. When Leon Edwards shocked the world knocking out Usman, Gamebred tried to slide his way into an undeserved title shot based on their history. Most fans were against this because Jorge was on a three-fight losing streak and had been avoiding Gilbert Burns. Masvidal would go on social media attempting to justify the merits of what's deserved, insisting that his body of work alone warrants a title shot when historically that has never been the case. According to his logic, what's to stop someone like Jim Miller from getting a title shot? Apparently winning streaks and beating top contenders means nothing. Then he pulls the star card, which can work sometimes because fighting is a business, but Jorge vs. Colby only sold 400k. His rematch with Usman did 700k, while their first fight did 1.3 million. Do you see a pattern here? Gamebred's stock had dropped drastically. Even the casuals stopped believing in the resurrection, and the interest with the three-piece and the soda storyline had faded for most people. When I was trying to get my title shot, they always like, like you're saying, who is he? And I don't know who he is. And now I'm the king. I'm the king now. I'll decide um, who's next. No, you moron. So if Masvidal wins in Miami, for you, that's the one that makes most sense? Um, yeah. What? I feel like there's a storyline there. What? If he gets the job done, I will, like I said, I'll have a look. I'll consider it. What? If he begs me, then I'll, I might let him slide in here. After the UFC decided to go with the rematch between Edwards and Usman, Masvidal would eventually fight Burns. If Jorge won, most would have assumed he was next for Leon. However, Dana firmly stated that Colby would be the one who's next in line. Many believe this had something to do with the Masvidal situation. There's an interesting theory that Dana promised to give Colby a title shot if he dropped the charges against Masvidal for assaulting him, which is feasible. At the end of the day, 
I'm game bread. He's Gilbert. He's going to go for the takedown 100 miles per hour and as hard as he can and hope that he gets in. You're a crotch sniffer. And you know what I do to crotch sniffer. What? Lose to all of them except for the one you landed that knee on? Gilbert, you know, he's tough until he runs out of gas or until he gets hit hard. You know, he's like a front runner of where we stop, man. And, uh, and he's got a lot of uh, sissiness in him that I'm going to bring out, man. He could get all butthurt and mad. But at the end of the day, every time I seen him get hit with a decent shot, he always looks for the way out. This chapter would be uh, Gilbert, the stepping stone burns. We've never been on the on the same skill set as far as like toughness and, and durability and, you know, that sturdiness. He's never had it either. He gets cracked and he starts skating, you know. I'm going to paint my and go on, on Gilbert's face. I'm fighting Gilbert and I'm fighting Leon. And it's just, I'm, I'm telling you, that, that that's going to play out. He will never learn. Burns defeated Masvidal by unanimous decision. Now on a four-fight losing streak, Jorge accepted that his chances of capturing the UFC title are now over. I don't feel the same when I get in here no more. It's been 20 long years. I love all of you. I love everybody. I love this fucking sport. I'm a multi-millionaire. I didn't start from shit. And I can say I'm good for life now. He just didn't want to have to live the rest of his life knowing that he retired off of getting his ass beat by me. So, of course, he's going to come and, and lose to somebody else in the division because he just... You know, he didn't want that being hung over his head that I retired him. But, guys, I'll be honest. I retired Jorge Masvidal Street Judas in 2022 in, in T-Mobile Arena. <laughs> that got me good. That was a good one, man. In the end, I was happy for Masvidal when his career blew up. His lightning in a bottle performances against Till, Askren, and Diaz are what makes this sport fun to watch. Yet it also proved that his race never held him back like he once claimed. I mean, how else could you rationalize it? Did the world magically stop being racist and accept him? Or did he finally do something in his career that captured the attention of the masses? Which was it? If anything, his stereotypical Tony Montana gimmick was beloved by fans. They didn't care that he once refused to participate in social media, or claim that he'd never do reality TV or pro wrestling, or even replicated Conor McGregor's venture into alcohol. Okay, the man dances like the silhouettes from Home Alone. Who cares? So what if his sister has lost more men in her bush than the Bermuda Triangle all because she's never heard of a weed whacker? Perhaps they were hiding from the law and were better off lost in that hornet's nest anyway. Alright, those wins over Darren, Ben, and Nate aged like fine piss. They mattered at the time and that's what counts. Ben Askren actually holds a UFC record now. Put some respect on his grave. If there's any positives from Jorge retiring, it's never having to see that dumb BMF title again. Oh shit. This sport took a drastic turn for the worse. It's all WWE and reality TV show. You're not gonna catch me doing whole shit. Super necessary. Racist.